Good morning, fellow riders. This is your host, Rusty James. It is Tuesday, September 1st, 2015, and this is The Ride. Good morning, friends. This is a very, very foggy day for me. A very dangerous day, actually. So just pray that I get to work safe and sound, will ya? Everyone doing well today? Well, for those who aren't, know that I'm praying for your situation right now. That you'll be able to have the strength to make it through. I'm gonna flash my lights at this guy who does not have his headlights on. I'm in the thickest fog that I've been in in a while. I don't know why that guy didn't think he needed lights. I still have my windshield wipers on, which got me thinking. You know, you can keep your, your window clean, but if you're going through the fog like this, it continues to just stick to your window longer than you would expect it to so I have to keep it clean I gotta keep my new my nose clean but you know there's a there's something interesting if you heat your car up if you change the environment in your vehicle in your vessel it causes that stuff not to stick as bad just saying so I've been checking out iTunes lately just because there's a new podcast up there called The Ride and I was very happy to see that my first day up there I think it was episode 27 the popularity was high so that was kind of encouraging so my encouragement to you is, if you are an iPad, iPod, iPhone, iTunes user, please go search for Rusty James or The Ride up in the podcast and, I don't know, subscribe maybe, definitely comment, share it with your friends who you know are Apple heads. And like to hang out at iTunes I just would appreciate it hey it's interesting when I was up there checking out iTunes just the uh, the enormity of the information it's crazy I mean obviously we know that there's a ton of music out there in the world I don't think that surprises much but I was amazed at how many podcasts are out there and you know everything you could think of sports talk fashion talk I was kind of interested in the writing and publishing stuff I mean that's just awesome the information that's out there makes it hard to focus in on one area when there's so much out there but I'm glad you're along with me today it tells me that you've at least you thought and I'll listen to this guy, see what's up with him. Or you were saying, because you've been listening, I'm going to get something new every day. I like to believe that that's true. I believe that you're going to get something new today. You want to know how I know? Because God puts his wisdom into us. And um, today I'm not too shy about going somewhere somewhere where I got to be bold you ready to buckle in guys and gals because I got a word that I just was sensing this morning I realized I don't have my my tablet next to me with the Word of God so I'm gonna have to rely on my memory which is a good thing well anyway I have been thinking about something and I know I'm going to rattle some feathers this morning. 
Is that the right term, rattle their feathers? I don't think that's right. I might be rattling your cage, and that would be a good thing because I have to say that the thing I'm going to be talking about cages people up. <laughs> See where that went? Didn't even plan for that. I'm going to rattle your cage today. I'm, if, if you happen to be in this particular cage, I'm going to rattle it. In fact, I'm going to bust open the door, baby. Because many people I know who are in this particular cage, at least by their words and their actions, would lead me to believe that they do not want to be in that cage. But sometimes, from their words and their actions, though it appears that their words are telling me they don't want to be in the cage, I can sit there and I can offer them the key, I can give them the key, and they'll be too shy to put it in the lock that's keeping them in that cage. So today is a day of boldness, godly boldness. I'm going to give you a key, and this is a statement by faith because I don't quite know exactly what's going to be said here. But I know that I will not try to mislead, so I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit floods my brain cavity with some knowledge. But I believe that there's going to be something good here today, and this can be a start of a new day for you. Not everybody hearing this is in this cage, okay? But there are definitely some who are. So what is this cage I'm talking about? Well, before I explain that, I guess I want to I want to touch on a mindset that sometimes we get, okay? And that maybe it'll make things clearer. So, anybody ever hear of Peter Pan syndrome? In popular culture, it's a it's a psychological type of term. I think there was a book written about it and, it and it describes a certain type of thought process or uh, mindset of someone. The, the general culture kind of uses that term to kind of simplify the, the reality of it. But they simplify it and it's kind of like, oh, you live in your mom's basement. You've got Peter Pan syndrome. I mean, that's the popular culture kind of kind of ridicules someone in that situation. Now, I can preach about this with a lot of authority because I live in my mom's basement. <laughs> if you didn't know, I do. My whole family does. But we're in a transition to moving into a house, so it's allowable. But Peter Pan syndrome. I'm going to simplify it and not get too technical or too psychological today because I didn't do a lot of research on it. I'm just kind of using it as the term a lot of people loosely use in the culture. But it's kind of like an immature, not wanting to take on responsibility. No, please don't get mad at me if you live in your mom's basement. But if you're in your 20s, you better be paying some rent, yo. Paying for some food, doing your own laundry, that kind of stuff. You gotta take some responsibility. And that's what I'm talking about today, taking some responsibility. So here's a deal. As Christians, we can feed on the milk. You know, in scripture that talks about you know, the young Christians wanting their milk, but then needing to get to meat, but they want to stay with the milk. It's a picture of an infant. Oh, coddle me. Oh, 
I need to know that I'm loved. Well, we certainly do need that. So I'm not going to I'm not going to ridicule that. But maybe that's not exactly what that's saying when you need to have that coddling going on. Yo, dude. Um It's more like I need you to show me that you love me. So we all need to know that we're loved, right? I think that's a human reality. We all need to know that we're loved. But what do we do if we don't know that we're loved? We go cuddle up and get coddled by someone who was willing to show us that they love us. And if we don't believe we're loved, we're going to do that forever. Give me the milk. Give me the milk. Give me the milk. I need love. I need love. And I'm saying, Jesus first loved you. So even before you knew about him, he already loved you. It's kind of up to us to start believing that we're loved. I know I'm rattling some cages. This is just this is just one part of a bigger thing here. And I probably will talk about this over the next few weeks. You know, at times, but <clears throat> Peter Pan Christian. They want that milk. I need that milk. Give me the milk. And shy away from the meat of the word, the harder things. But don't you know that Jesus Christ loves you? Well, maybe you don't. Because sometimes we need that constant affirmation that we're loved. Can I tell you today that he does love you? And if you sit with him... And spend time with him he will show you that love if you need that affirmation so I'm not saying don't do that but he has more for you than having to rely on just that to get through your day he kind of wants you to get out of the basement the basement it's kind of a picture for me as I think about it as the city that's on the hill but it's got a you know a bushel over the light it doesn't have its light shining like it should be it's kind of protecting itself from hurt and we do do that and that was the next part of this little rant that we will stay in that cage or in that basement for protection to keep ourselves protected and why probably because we've been hurt in the past rattle 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 I don't want to go out in the real world I don't want to get out of this little cage of mine because I might get hurt again. Well, you certainly will if you keep having to come to the Father to, to know whether or not you're loved. If you know you're loved, if you know that He's got good plans for you, then you can maybe step out of that cage. Here's the key. Here's a key. It's a lot. It's really easy to. Okay, I'm gonna rattle some more. Okay, I told you, buckle up. Remember earlier, I was saying how, based on the words of the person in the cage and based on their behaviors, it sounded like they wanted to get out of the cage, but thinking about it a little bit more and basing certain things on the words they say 
it's clear that they don't really want to get out of that cage. They don't because of a protection thing. They need they feel protected in there. Can I say to you today that that cage was not made for you? It doesn't fit you. You are bigger than the cage. That cage will cause you to get atrophied. Your muscles won't be where they ought to be. Your spiritual muscles. The cage is not for you. But I hear people say things like, this wrong was done to me. And my life is this way because of that wrong. Or worse, and I'm not minimizing that there was wrong done. Or worse, this wrong is going to be done to me. So I'm going to stay in the cage so that doesn't happen. Now, obviously, the cage is a metaphor. Because what it really is is a fear a fear that God won't be able to help me through a situation which is understandable if you don't know that he cares for you and has the best for you and that's understandable because apparently he didn't have the best for you in the past at least that's what it appears to be because of the pain that you had to go through. Can I say that he does have the best for you in mind? And despite the troubles you've gone through and the heartache that you've maybe had to go through, and I know that it's severe in some cases, you really, really need to let go of that because holding on to that thing, whatever those that thing is or the and it can be multiple things but holding on to that and trusting the strength that has over your life more than the strength that God has that's idol worship rattle 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 So how can I tell someone who's in the situation like that that Jesus has an answer? Because we're getting into deep psychological territory, right? And you know, I've told you, I'm not a psychologist. Consult one if, if you need to. And a, and a good Christian counselor. So what, what do I say? Well, I can say the words that Jesus would say, and it's simply, come and follow me. Spend time with me. But when he said, come follow, that implied something. That they didn't stay where they were. They had to walk. They had to get off their backside and make some movement. When Jesus said to the prostitute, go and leave your life of sin, it was a movement request, or not actually a request, it was a command. As Christians, we are to be helping others. Would you agree? Sharing the gospel, you know, bringing the word of the Lord to people who don't know it. How can we possibly be on that rescue team if we're unable to even get out of our cage.
So this is this requires a step of faith, I believe, is what the answer here is. Because it took a step of faith for the disciples to follow Jesus. Jesus knew the challenges that they would face by being a follower of him. But they also knew the benefit. So there was challenges. There were the world wouldn't appreciate when all is said and done, the world had contempt for what they were doing. Everyone but I think John was killed as a martyr. And yet he calls he called them to follow him. Can I divert for just a second? I'm just thinking about something. You know how we're always thinking that Jesus is you know this good guy and you know if Jesus if Jesus was good and everything then why do bad things happen well how do you how do you reconcile that fact I just brought up that he asked these guys to follow him and he knew that they were going to be killed for their following him now if you were the mother of one of these disciples, you could say to Jesus, how could you do that? How could you kill my little boy? How do you reconcile that? Is Jesus good or is he not good? I think Jesus is good and the sin nature in humanity is bad. And that's what killed the disciple. Okay, so I, I just diverted, made you chew on that a little bit. Maybe a little bit of meat to think about. So getting back to the whole idea of how we sometimes rest on our... I don't want to say woe is me. But it's kind of like that mentality because we're always focusing I shouldn't say always I shouldn't say that sometimes we focus on the things that God doesn't want us to focus on things like an expectation that people would hurt us or an expectation that because they've hurt us in the past it's going to happen again or worse an expectation that it will happen again because we're such a miserable person that is from hell and you have to let that go that's where we're headed to today that is exactly where we're headed to today if that is you today and you think that these things have happened to you because somehow you have brought it on yourself. You have to recognize something. If you've never considered this before, you need to know this, that that is not the truth. You don't have some kind of stain in your soul that cannot be cleansed by the finished work, finished with a capital F, of the cross nothing you can do nothing who you are nothing that you ever did or ever think you might do has more power in your life than what Jesus did on the cross for you and you need to let that go and dare I say you need to stop it right now in Jesus name stop it What you do when you do that is you render what Jesus did on the cross as not valid in your life. And you really aren't relying on him. And you really aren't letting the love of Christ come into that area of your life where you are holding on to this hurt, whatever it is. 
You need to let that go. You need to give that to the Lord. And I know that on some of these situations, I've talked about it in the past, they can be very painful, very hurtful. And all I'm saying is just know that what I said just a minute ago is true. I'm not necessarily saying that you can do it on your own. So you need to find somebody, if, if it's that way for you, you need to find somebody who you can trust in the family of God. And you need to tell that person what's going on. And it really needs to be someone who is professionally capable of helping you. Don't just go to your girlfriend or your boyfriend and, and just unload this thing. Especially if it has to do with criminal activity. Okay? So I'm getting way outside of my league of expertise here. But you need to know that if you are placing a higher power over your life by holding on to those thoughts about yourself rather than the thoughts that God has for you, that's dangerous territory that will keep you in that cage. You are not made for that cage. So I think this is a really good time for us to pray. So if that's you, if that's you and you know that's you, we're going to go before our Heavenly Father right now. I think it's really good for us to just quiet our mind because when we're in prayer with the Lord, He will speak things to you. He will confirm things to you. This isn't me just trying to waste time while I'm on the road driving. This is me, I guess, doing what I think the Lord wants me to do at this very moment in time. And we're going to go in prayer right now, okay? Let, let's settle our mind. Lord, the people that are in agreement right now, that they've got issues like this. Lord, we come before you and we know that you are our good Father. That you have good gifts for your children. And that one of these gifts was Jesus Christ that you gave freely to take on all the dark and dirty, heinous things that may have happened in our life. And he took them. He rendered them powerless by the work he did on the cross. And right now, Lord, these things that have had a hold on us, these things that have chained us into this cage, we recognize that the chain has become weak by the knowledge of your word right now today. The chain is falling away. There is no chain. Because you broke it and I pray that our understanding of your love for us will be broadened and, and better understood that it's more than just the comforting love of a father that maybe we didn't have or or the tender touch that we never had growing up it's more than just that. It's a love that is never failing, a love that is strong, a love that is jealous for us. A love that would say to us, I love you more, so much more than to let you stay in that cage. That cage is not for you. 
So I love you more than that. I think the Lord is saying to us today. So Lord, right now, in our mind's eye, we take that that thing that we've been holding on to, the thing that we've given power over our lives, we, we give it to you. Lord, help us to see that it doesn't take effort on our part to lay that at your feet. It just takes faith. And so right now, Lord, we trust that as we give this to you, you will take it and you will help deal with those areas in our life that are now exposed. I pray, Lord, that you would put the oil of healing in those places so that we can be new again in those places so that we can trust again. We know this is not a simple thing, but you are the master of taking complex things and ministering to us. So we give that to you. In the name of Jesus, we give that to you. Amen. So as we do that today, remember you've placed it there and he's taken it. And so it's not fair that we go back and take it up again. He has called you by name and you are not defined by those things that had happened. Because God has meat for you. God has maturity for you. And he knows that while you're in the cage, it's not your size. You won't grow to the size that he has wanted for you until you get out of that cage. So I think this is a great day In fact, I know it's a great day. I know without a doubt that there are people that have listened to that and have prayed that prayer and are seeing things in a newer way. I have faith to believe that that's going on. So it's good to see that you took the key and you opened that lock and you're taking those first steps of faith outside of that cage. It might feel a little weird because in the cage you knew where the boundaries were. You knew where you couldn't go because you couldn't basically go anywhere, but you at least you had comfort in that. Even though it was a misery, there was still comfort in knowing where the limits were. And now as you step out of this cage, it might be it might be scary that there appears to be no limits or there are no no guards or no railings or uh, trust me they're there there are places you shouldn't go but there's a freedom now that i think you can experience and as your muscles stretch and as your lungs expand I believe that God's holy breath will flow in there and heal those things of scar tissue and atrophy. So that's that's where we needed to go today. So and as you as you're able to begin that walk outside of that trap of a cage.
you know, I just realized that cage isn't necessarily just a man-made thing. I had a picture of a trap, an actual trap, like the kind of thing that Satan would set to snare us. And don't you know that's exactly what he does? So remember this, remember this, remember this. If you start feeling like, oh, but I, th but that's just who I am. That cage is part of who I am. No. I said that you shouldn't be thinking in terms of, in those terms. That cage is not who you are because God doesn't want you to grow up in that cage. That cage came from our enemy. It was a snare to you. Some people fall into that easier than others. And while personality types and differences like that with different people can make it maybe more easy for one person to fall into that kind of trap than another, it still doesn't make it valid for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? It just makes it all the more challenging for you to not fall into that kind of trap. If you find yourself blaming other folks for things that are happening in your life, that's one of the first signs that you're starting to walk into that snare, into that cage again. Remember that God has good things for you. And although the world has junk to throw in your face at times, just remember that your God is faithful The last thing you want to do is lock that lock again and, and throw the key out because it's safe in there. Don't do that. We've already declared that there are some good things that God has already done, already finished with a capital F, so that you can walk outside of that cage and walk in freedom. Cool? Cool. Well, it's been good chatting with you today. And I pray that you will have victory every day of your life. And just like this fog is clearing off my windshield, you change the environment in your, vis in your vehicle, in your vessel, and it helps you see. All right, stay in that word live in peace pray for those who persecute you and don't run back into that cage but know that the cage has been destroyed by the power of the cross amen amen we will catch you on the flip